welcome to another episode of The Fintech Show. On this episode, we look at biometric security and more specifically, biometric technology in payments. Is it something that people can benefit from and does it result in higher levels of security? To find out more, we sit down with Thomas Rex, Fingerprints SVP, to discuss the growth of contactless payments and how this will make biometric technology in cards a necessity. So in terms of geography, where do you see contactless payment technology evolving in the future? I think it's growing very fast in, in most regions in the world. Uh, some countries more than others, especially in Europe, you have UK, France, etc., where it's growing very fast. But uh, big players like MasterCard, Visa are mandating now that all new cards should be contactless. And also there are mandates around uh, point of sales machines that they should be uh, contactless. So I think this is uh, going to happen very fast in the future, actually. Do you think we're going to see some underdeveloped nations when it comes to payment technology jump straight ahead to contactless technology? Yes, I think you're right. Uh, there, there is a big potential. Still, there are very big countries, regions where contactless is not so common. And, and so there is actually a very big potential. Also, the usage, uh, even if you have a contactless card, not all people know that you can use them as contactless. And I think uh, word of mouth would be very uh, good and, and uh, important in that respect. We then head to China to catch up with Sebastian Simitkovsky, the CEO of Klarna, who gives us his insight into car technology and what it means for them and the retailers. So card is still king over in Europe. Can you tell me some of the technological advancements customers are going to be seeing over in Europe and America soon when it comes to paying over card? Sure. So we, all, we already la launched our own plastic. Um, we uh, use card networks a lot, obviously, in what we do today. However, we also see some of the challenges that it comes with, such as the fact that like, card networks today do not provide SKU level data, uh, which is very essential to us and to the user experience that we give both on the user and the consumer on the merchant side. So, um, so they are good for some specific things, but there's also things that they are lacking. Over in Madrid, I speak with Gonzalo Rodriguez, head of customer solutions from BBVA, who talks about how the regulations will potentially instigate increased innovation in card payments in Europe. Are we going to see any changes in card technology that are going to help the customer experience for BBVA? Uh, let's see how it evolves in Europe. It's still unclear at this, at this point. No? Even with card, I mean, the percentage of payments made through card varies a lot across countries. No? So we have countries like Spain, which is slightly above 30, and the Nordic countries uh, well above 60. No? So we don't have a, a very similar starting position in, in Europe across, across different countries. And it also depends a lot about how governments and regulation uh, really want to push this forward. So we can really make a big jump here, we can go, as we go today, progressing step by step. No? As, as more purchases are going through e-commerce, this is going to be definitely a driver of in the growth of credit card payments. But uh, how far this is, or how fast this is going to be, it really depends a lot on, on regulation and how governance across countries push in that direction. No? And still, uh, in the battle of QR versus cards, in the case of Europe, I think the cards are going to stay here, or mobile payments stay here for, for a while. No? Historically, the cards have become more and more safe and more and more convenient over time. Started with embossed cards, moving to MagStripe, moving to uh, EMV chip, and then contactless. So all the time, the industry wants to have more and more safe and more and more convenient cards. And I think the next step to make it even more convenient, even more safe, will be to introduce biometrics into the smart cards. So is biometrics the next step in card evolution? Is it easy to implement? And could it help increase the levels of security for customers? To find out, we speak with Tinkoff Bank's CEO, Oliver Hughes, to get his thoughts on biometric technology as a whole. So they are cool. Um, deploying them is not easy. But if you can deploy them, these new technologies, in the right way, then some of them enhance customer experience. And some of them uh, you don't really see externally. They're not very visible, but they can do wonders with your, uh, for your efficiency. So there are, I kind of uh, break this down into different areas. So there's stuff on the security side. 
and that's about um, customer experience because the, what we've done to consumers uh, over the last few years is, is awful in terms of their customer um, confidence levels, in terms of how many passwords they have to have. We, co we made them compromise their own security by having 100 passwords and they're all the same password and normally pretty weak passwords. So, so um, introducing um, two-factor authentication, particularly with biometrics, is, is excellent. What we've done in the call center, for example, is um, introduce voice authentication. We initially had a, an off-the-peg solution. Um, we liked it, but it didn't cover all the functionality that we needed, so we developed our own. So we have our own iVector-based um, algorithm. Uh, it now has probably about five million voice prints in the database, and uh, we're handling most of the calls through voice authentication, which cuts down call handling times. It's a great customer experience because you don't have to give passwords in most cases. So that's excellent. Um, Obviously, uh, fingerprint um, and, uh, and various sort of biometric uh, identifica identification algorithms are stuff which we've implemented for payments uh, on our ATMs, and that's something which, which is great customer experience. We'll see if it also enhances security over time. Back in Sweden, Thomas Rex talks to us about how biometrics will definitely improve both sort of the customer experience and security. He gives us examples like biometrics in mobile phones paving the way already. And when we ask consumers, they say that they are concerned about security. At the same time, they're annoyed with a cap uh, because they cannot use it in Sweden, for instance, above 200 kroner. So the higher cap you have, the bigger security concerns. The lower cap you have, the less convenient. And there, actually, biometry comes in. You can remove the cap uh, straight off, and then you have both security and convenience at the same time. And there is one good example already. In France, Société Générale has announced a pilot, and in that pilot, they have decided to completely remove the cap. So what we have said all the time actually proves in reality now to be true. So we've touched on it slightly already, but fingerprint technology, biometric technology, massively improved convenience on mobile phones. Are we going to see it replicated again in card technology, wearables, etc.? I think uh, the mobile phone success is really paving the way for other form factors. So people are really used to uh, using their fingerprint sensor in mobile phones. I think around 70% of all new phones has that feature and people really like it. Adding, it's not usual that you get higher security and convenience at the same time. Normally added security increases the hassle, right? But in this case, you get both at the same time. And since people are so used to it in mobile phones, I think they will easily uh, adopt it also in uh, payment cards. People are already today quite used to uh, do payments with fingerprint sensor in mobile phones. So it will be natural for the consumers to move on to other form factors like payment cards, where the market is, of course, huge already. And then to other form factors like uh, wearables, for instance. Uh, in the wearable case, you can only use the contactless scenario. So that's why we believe cards will come earlier in terms of fingerprint biometry. Lastly, the CEO of Klarna dives deeper into the balance between security, simplicity, and the future of biometrics from a global perspective. Now, biometric technology is obviously huge in China. Are we going to start to see it move into Europe and America? Look, I think that there is in Europe a very different, especially in Europe and in the US to some degree as well, there's a very different mindset around privacy, right? Uh, and the balance between privacy, security, and, and, uh, and so forth. But in the end, we will, what is happening here will be used in Europe and US as well. So take a very concrete example is anti-money laundering, know your customer. What has happened in Europe and the US is that regulators feeling unsecure about how to ta ta you know, tackle these issues have basically outsourced policing activities to the banks and say, you scan through your transactions, you find the crimes, and you resolve them and report back to us, right? Police doesn't do that normally. They don't outsource their activities. They don't say, hey, can you find the crimes? You all the you know, restaurant owners, you find the crimes. Like, it's not supposed to work that way. That's policing activities. But that's the simplicity at which they have tactics, right? Here, in this part of the world, they have realized, like, if all the banks report all the data to a central unit, they can scan and recognize crime and fraud, and that's a policing activity. Now, obviously, with that comes a privacy concern. What if you have a central database that knows everything about all your, you know, all your citizens and users? And I think, but 
that's where we're heading anyway. No, unfortunately, nothing's going to stop that. I mean, basically what consumers are asking for is safety, simplicity, and flexibility. Um, when it comes to simplicity, it's speed is, is very, you know, the same thing in a way. I think the challenge we had is like, at some point in time, the card schemes were introducing things like, you know, verify by visa and all that stuff, right? In the UK, it meant like, enter the third, fifth, and seventh character of your password. Like, that's an awful experience. So I think where people are starting to realize is that the fraud problem and the security problem, there's no silver bullet solutions. There's never going to be face recognition is not going to solve it. You know? So what you got to do is you got to have risk-based assessments where based on the risk of the transaction, you're going to realize like, should I, is this number of security protocols enough or do I need extra protocols? And so there will always be this shift between depending on if I'm transferring a million pounds, it's a very different thing to if I'm pay, you know, paying something for 10 pounds. So you need to be able to assess the risk and based on it, apply different systems in order to find that balance between speed and security. In Europe, regulation is now king. How can biometric technology help solve some of the issues that some of the institutions are quite scared about when it comes to GDPR? In the same way as the PIN is securely stored in the card, all your biometric data is also secured uh, safely in the card. Same as in mobile phones, where you always store all your uh, biometric data in the phone. So what are the actual use cases for a customer walking around the street? Why should they use a biometric payment card? I think people tend to forget their PIN code. You have maybe many cards, and if you uh, use the wrong card, you have the wrong PIN, right? So, so by uh, adding biometry, I think that could become your top of the wallet uh, card, the card you want to use. It's safer. It's more convenient. If you lose it, uh, nobody else can use it in the stores. You remove the payment cap of 200 kroner in Sweden, use it for any amount very fast below one second. So I think there are many reasons. I think cards, uh, it's getting more and more fashionable actually. And uh, with different designs, you can have them customized for yourself. Some people like to have metal cards uh, and also um, in our studies, when we have done trials with the biometric cards, actually the coolness factor comes in. Not only security and convenience, but also it feels uh, really cool to have that new technology in your card. That's it from us. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us in the next episode of The Fintech Show.